Hollywood. Oh, good for you. It's the Tom Likert Show. And how was it? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likert. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likert Show. Anybody see Kobe Bryant last night? Kobe Bryant. He put on a show last night for the Los Angeles Lakers. It was uh, truly remarkable. Now, um, first of all, let me just say this. Uh, Kobe Bryant and the Lakers played against the New York Knickerbockers at uh, New York's Madison Square Garden. And uh, I do not understand why people... I mean, forget the fact that they keep saying it. I don't understand why people believe that somehow Madison Square Garden and the fans there are particularly knowledgeable about basketball. Any more knowledgeable than fans at the Boston Garden, whatever they're calling the Boston Garden. The What are they calling that? There's some corporate name. But uh, the new Boston Garden or uh, fans at Staples Center or fans at uh, the United Center in Chicago, whatever. Why does anyone think that fans at Madison Square Garden are? I've seen the phrases like connoisseurs of basketball. Or I saw Madison Square Garden referred to as a basketball mecca. It's home of one of the worst teams in the NBA for years. A team that it's been so long since they won a championship that the last time they won the championship, their sixth man was a guy named Phil Jackson. That's how long it's been since they won a championship. 1973. 36 years since the New York Knicks won a championship. 36 years. So what makes Madison Square Garden a basketball mecca? The answer, nothing. It's it, it, it's in the minds of the delusional New Yorkers who happen to have jobs writing for, you know, Sports Illustrated or, you know, whatever magazine or newspaper, whatever website. And I don't happen to believe Madison Square Garden is a, is a basketball mecca because I believe in a basketball mecca you'd have a great basketball team to watch. Period. And I do not believe because people wear suits and ties to the game, which is kind of comical when you're watching the Knicks game. You get all these guys in suits and ties sitting in the lower area, the lower bowl, the court seats. You know, it's kind of comical. These guys go to, to, to they, in, in the 21st century. They, they can't even have a like casual Friday to go to a basketball game. They're in suits and ties watching the game. Come on, folks. What would you come there by? A horse and carriage? Come on. The days are over. But wearing a suit and tie does not make you more knowledgeable about basketball. does not make you a basketball connoisseur. It doesn't. So here are the New York Knicks playing the Los Angeles Lakers last night. And Kobe Bryant, who has obviously bought into the hype himself. You know, he somehow has read or heard about this stuff and somehow believes that it's a basketball mecca. When in reality, it's just another arena with a very bad basketball team. Because let's face it, the NBA has 10 good teams and uh, about uh, 22 other teams. That st- is it, how do they have, 32 or 30? I don't even know anymore. But there's like 10 great teams, and, and the rest of them are either 500 teams or they just out and out stink. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that, that's the way the NBA has become. The NBA just, uh, you know, has the uh, elite teams, as you know, and then uh, so many of the teams are are horrific, just horrific. I mean, I'm uh, looking over the NBA teams right now just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. And you've got these teams like uh, the Boston Celtics, who are 40 and 9, Cleveland 37 and 9. Lakers thirty eight and nine, Orlando thirty six and eleven. You know you get uh, San Antonio's thirty three and fourteen. You got about ten teams that you really really respect. 
There's 30 teams, by the way, in the NBA. But uh, the vast majority of the teams are like... And by the way, I have the NBA package on my satellite. And how many nights do you turn on the TV and you see the games coming in like the Memphis Grizzlies are playing the Oklahoma City Thunder? And that's mostly what the games are. You know, the... Uh, Right? The Washington Wizards are playing the Charlotte Bobcats. I mean, are you that desperate for something to watch on TV that you would sit and watch that game? Um, but some people do get that desperate. I know people who are such basketball fans, they'll watch the WNBA, but come on. I mean, uh, let's take a look at the Atlantic Division of the NBA. The second place team is the Philadelphia 76ers. They're 23 and 23. They are 15 and a half games out of first place. In the Central Division, the uh, Detroit Pistons are 25 and 21. They are 12 games out of first place. I mean, the season is uh, just, just past half over. And some of these teams have already finished. In the Pacific Division, you got the Lakers in first place at uh, 38 and 9, followed by the Phoenix Suns, who are 26 and 20. They're 11 and a half games out of first place. And there are so many teams with lousy records. Memphis, 12 and 35. The Clippers, 10 and 38. Sacramento, 11 and 39. Golden State, 15 and 34. Oklahoma City, 11 and 37. Minnesota, 16 and 30. Washington, 10 and 38. Charlotte, 19 and 29. Indiana, 19 and 29. Toronto, 19 and 30. The Clippers and the Sacramento Kings are already 28 and a half games out of first place. It's done. They're done. They're toast. And the New York Knickerbockers, by the way, for, uh, for all that talk about New Yorkers being basketball connoisseurs, they are a whopping 21 and 26. They are 18 games out of first place. But I would say if they were such connoisseurs, they'd stop going to the games. <laughs> they'd stop putting up with this crap, but they don't. They, the connoisseurs keep going. Not only that, they're delusional. They keep telling us that the Knicks are somehow important to the NBA. And they're not. Bottom line. End of story. Anyway, Kobe Bryant somehow has, uh, I, maybe he has been watching the standings in the, uh, in the Eastern Conference. Maybe, uh, he's too young to remember how many years the Knicks have stunk. But he's bought into this lie that New York is a basketball mecca or that Madison Square Garden's a basketball mecca is full of basketball connoisseurs. And so he goes there and he plays his heart out. And last night, Kobe Bryant scored more points than anyone who's ever played at Madison Square Garden. He scored 61 points. Which, by the way, Hershey, Pennsylvania had somebody score 100 points in an NBA game, Will Chamberlain. So if 61 points is the most anyone's ever scored, the basketball connoisseur has never seen 100 points in a game. Or how about 81 points in a game, which was seen at uh, Staples Center by us uh, West Coast savages who don't understand basketball. We're just a bunch of fruits, nuts, and flakes here in Los Angeles. You just ask anybody in New York, they'll tell you. We saw Kobe score 81 points. Well, all of us except Joel Meyer saw it, by the way. Uh, 81 points against the Toronto Raptors. But, uh, okay, uh, New York, finally you get to see somebody score 61 points. <laughs> you finally got to see it. There you go. He scored the, uh, the most points uh, ever in a game at Madison Square Garden. And, uh, Gary, you're right. All the guys suits and ties, they all have corporate tickets, which they never pay for. These are all the, uh, these are all the, like, Bernie Madoff's employees all sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> all the basketball connoisseurs. We're connoisseurs of basketball. Yeah. It's Madison Square Garden. We're connoisseurs. In New York, you know, we only accept the best. We're a bunch of connoisseurs. We eat some bread hot dogs. We're on a roll. And we're connoisseurs. We got Stefan Marbury. We're a bunch of connoisseurs. <laughs> what a bunch of maroons. Unbelievable. 
But uh, nonetheless, Kobe Bryant uh, set the record at Madison Square Garden. And, of course, uh, it's 20 points less than he scored uh, setting the record at Staples Center. But, you know, that's good enough. Nobody on the Knicks will ever score more points than Kobe scored. Uh, don't worry about that. That's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. By the way, Bernard King had the previous record. How many championships did he win with the Knicks? That's exactly right. Zero. Just thought all the connoisseurs out there would uh, <laughs> would want to have a little trivia question that would relate to them. It's just amazing. So uh, Kobe Bryant, I mean, really, does it get any better than this? If you're a Laker fan, does it get any better than this? Yes, we've lost Andrew Bynum again this year, and... Yes, it was Kobe who tripped over Andrew Bynum, and that's why we lost him. So I'm sure Kobe was feeling somewhat responsible. Felt like he had to step up and turn it on last night. But uh, come on, let's talk about Kobe, for Christ's sake. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-8666. The Tom Likas Show. the Tom Likas Show. Now with shorter commercial breaks, fewer commercials, and more of your telephone calls than ever before. We're doing it all for you. You bet we are. And we are fulfilling your wishes. If you wish for something hard enough, eventually it will happen. You never know when your boss might be forced to step down or something. If you wish for it enough, it happens. Thank you, Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. By the way, anybody's ex-boss out there tuned in right now? Anybody who has stepped down recently? Say hi to you. I want to say hello from number one. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Number one in the afternoon here in L.A. That's right, number one. <laughs> Do you know we had a boss? He was forced to step down. We had a boss who uh, told me that I'd get more listeners if I came on and backed John McCain for president. <laughs> yeah. Of course, he's sitting home listening to this right now. He's not here, but... Um... Number one! <laughs> oh, my goodness. Stand by the riverbank long enough. You know what they say. You see the bodies of your enemies floating by. <laughs> there he is. Unreal. 1-800-5800-TOM. Kobe, 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 Kobe. Nom on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing today, bro? Doing okay, Nom. I can't believe it, man. People are talking about the 61 at Madison Square. I mean, the guy is a selfish guy. The one reason he put up so many points last night was that he was being interviewed after the show by Spike Lee for some documentary that's interview that's showing on uh, ESPN. I think it's in May or something. By the way, so yeah, Spike Lee's another example of, of New Yorkers uh, being delusional. Can you name any Spike Lee movie made in the last 15 years? Oh, no, no, not at all. Maybe I mean, all this guy does is he does commercials... In which you're supposed, you always have to look at Spike Lee or see his face in the commercial, uh, or he uh, uh, he makes movies. I, I imagine or he made them at one time, and he and he's at basketball games. I mean, who is this guy, and why does anyone care? Because he's being paid to do it, Tom. Well, yeah, but uh, again, why does anybody pay this guy? I mean, the, the last movie I remember seeing by him was about 18 years ago. <laughs> he may have made other movies, but I couldn't name one. I, I seriously just want other people to call in and keep it real. Kobe is Kobe, and the Lakers are the Lakers. But, I mean, if he if he wasn't being interviewed that night by Spike Lee for some documentary that's airing later, later this year, I'm sure he would not have put up as many points as he did. You know, he's only doing it for his you don't own think it had to. You don't think it had to do with him tripping over Andrew Bynum and putting him out for 12 <laughs> weeks? Hey, as soon as I heard about that, I text messaged all the guys I work with. I work at a sports bar, and uh, text messaged them all because all they could talk about all the time is the Lakers. 
Well, in L.A., that's all we uh, pretty much do talk about. And as, you know, I mean, does anybody talk about the Clippers? You know what I said about the Clippers, right? <laughs> you, know, you, can, you, know, you know who the Clipper fans are? <laughs> They're the people who carjack the Laker fans. That That is true. It's that true, right? True. <laughs> but as, as far as me, I was born and raised in Texas, diehard Spurs fan. Take me out to the bong rip, please. Here, here you go, Nom. Victor on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How are you doing today, Tom? Do you care? Yes, I do, sir. I'm doing great. Well, I just want to say that, you know, New York doesn't, hasn't, had, hasn't had a relevant team for a long time, so why should you even care about New York in the first place? I mean, I, I don't. Exactly. I mean, Kobe's a great player, and, you know, you can do this anywhere. It doesn't matter where it is. The only reason they hype it up is just because... Spike Lee wants to make more movies, you know. And Where did Kobe get this himself. idea that Madison Square Garden was somehow special for basketball? I don't know. He just bit into the hype, I guess. <laughs> I mean, Staples Center has had more champions than Madison Square Garden. Exactly. I mean, I, I, San Antonio is a more relevant place than New York these days. And well, it certainly in the business. NBA it is. Exactly, you know. I mean, that's just how it is. The Boston yeah. Celtics have won more championships than the New York Knickerbockers. Exactly, and it's just it's just ridiculous that people think New York's like a big because it has tall, pretty towers, and you know it's just because it's a big city doesn't mean that it's a relevant sports city. You know, I mean they haven't they haven't had a winner like in the past couple of years, I believe, and it's just ridiculous how people uh, put them up there. You yeah. know, they haven't done anything in sports. No, no, no. The New York Giants won the Super Bowl last year. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, oh wow. Sorry about that. But how about all the yachts in New York who said that? Oh, we're going to have an old New York Super Bowl this year. It's going to be Brett Favre against Eli Manning, and the whole country is waiting to see the New York Jets play the New York Giants. The whole country is waiting. To see. What are these people delusional or what? Well, I mean, they're very delusional. I mean, they, they, everyone said the same thing about Pittsburgh having the Eagles and the Steelers. I mean. That would have actually been more interesting than having Favre in there with uh, Eli Manning. I mean, this was the been... second highest rated Super Bowl of all time. Okay, yeah. End of story. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Mark on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Hey, I just wanted to tell you, like, um, long time listener, first time caller. Yeah. And um, I'm a big fan. First of all. Uh, and I only believe that New York gets as much hype as this because I think the league wants New York to do so well. It's a big marketplace, and that's why they're hype. Like everyone's pushing for LeBron to get to. But the why league. would the people there believe this hype? If they're such connoisseurs and they're so smart, you know, I've considered myself a connoisseur of wine. Now, if a wine smells rancid and it's been corked. Uh, I say, hey, take this bottle back. Throw it away. I'm not drinking that. You know, if I'm a connoisseur of basketball, the first thing I'm going to stop doing is paying $400 to watch the New York Knickerbockers. <laughs> well, New York fans are... I would have the chef take that back, okay? It's rancid. I, I, I believe it. The Knicks have been rancid since, like, Jeff Van Gundy left, even before then. The, the, Knicks, have been, the Knicks haven't won a championship since Phil Jackson was coming off the bench, for Christ's sake been a long time for new york and they're just waiting for that time and it's kind of like a hopeless cause yeah well that's that's wonderful uh, you know the chicago cardinals fans were waiting for the cardinals to repeat <laughs> uh, i have a question too what do you think about bynum's injury like you know affect them going into the final the playoffs this absolutely year? it's going to affect them i mean uh bynum has played well and uh you know it took him a while he was tentative out there when he first started playing but in the last couple of weeks, he's been scoring more. He's been using his body more. He's been playing in the paint more. And yeah, like, uh, the the Lakers need that. And uh, uh, you know, this you can't have uh, Kobe scoring sixty one points and Powell scoring thirty points every night. You can't do that. Yeah, don't worry about it. Like, I mean, like he was just getting working his way back in, and right when he finds his niche, it's like it's it's injury all over again. You know. It's killing me, I'll tell you that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's say hello here to Luke on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Father. How you doing? Okay, son. All right. Um, let me make a comment real quick on the first guy who called and said uh, Kobe's Kobe, and, you know, he was just trying to show off for Spike Lee. Well, 
I'm sorry, but if you can put up 61 points, you're automatically a superstar. And then let's take somebody who comes out of New York's great franchise, like uh, I would say that superstar, Chris Dudley. You think even if he shoots a thousand shots, he's going to put up 61 points? Of course not. Or to be a bit more fair, someone like Ewing, not even close. Kobe, Kobe's the best player in the game, and those who say LeBron James is, he's probably the next best thing. But like Kobe said, until Kobe retires, he's going to be on top. I, I, I think if Spike Lee really wants to make a documentary, he should get into the limo with any curry on the driver and uh, <laughs> some uh, some female underwear and go for it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, one more thing, Tom. I know this is uh, kind of relevant. I just wanted and you to can say... And you can have Marv Albert wearing uh, women's <laughs> panties and doing play-by-play. There you go. That's what Spike should do. Maybe so does Eddie Curry get, as soon as Eddie Curry gets the limo driver to perform, Marv could say, yes, from downtown. If you think about it, you think Jack Nicholson would sell out like Spike Lee and go and go do some movie with with a Nick? I'll tell you what. Not, he's, I can name I can name thirty Jack Nicholson movies. Can you name a Spike Lee movie of the last fifteen years? Not one. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. It's all about Kobe, baby. Tom like is one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Yes, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, yeah. You hear us now six days a week. Monday through Friday from 3 to 8 p.m. as you head home. Saturdays, 2 to 6 p.m. Pacific time. <laughs> All right here on 97.1 FM Talk. And if you are not privileged to live in Southern California, the people are connoisseurs of talk radio. Uh, all you have to do is uh, log on to blowmeuptom.com, click on the Listen Live button. Then you can uh, get to hear what the experts in Los Angeles have chosen for you as the, the best in talk radio. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's our telephone number. We're talking about Kobe Bryant. What What is he? He's playing over his head. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Janet on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Ooh, hi, Tom. I, fun, I can't believe it. Long time listener, and I'm not a first time caller, but it's the first time Dino or whoever put me through. I've got to tell you, it's hard for me to say. Who is a bigger, whom I'm a bigger fan of, you or Kobe? I love you. Um, I love Kobe, probably even more. Uh, born and raised in LA. My biggest pet peeve is New Yorkers that come here and complain. I've never met a person except for you who has complained about that. From New York. You're from New York. And you come here and you complain about New Yorkers saying bad things and how they can't find a good pizza and all that. And that's absolutely true. I don't think, see anything special about Madison Square Garden or the Knicks, particularly the Knicks. I follow Kobe Bryant ever since he came to the Lakers. I watch, I watch every single Laker game. By the way, I, have you ever been to Madison Square Garden? Uh, no, I have not. Let me tell you something. I was there last year to watch a hockey game. Yeah. Because the L.A. Kings played in New York, and so I went to New York to watch the Kings. And after having been at Staples Center now for the past 10 years, Madison Square Garden looks like a bandbox. It's quaint. It's tiny. Yeah. I mean, with all the big deal they make about Madison Square Garden, it's a, it's like a little tiny arena. Well, it's, it's another example of how everyone makes a big deal about everything in New York. I mean, New York right. is a great city, but I mean, you know, it's like freezing and snowing there now, and here it's like you know, seventy nine degrees today. I mean, come on. Yes, I was telling my brother who lives in New York. I was telling my brother about our Super Bowl party, where I was uh, out uh, grilling bratwurst uh, <laughs> with my friends uh, at my ranch up in uh, Santa Barbara County. It was uh, 80 degrees, sunny, and we were out there uh, making uh, hamburgers and hot dogs, and and uh, we were sitting out in the sun for hours yeah. before we watched the game, and then we watched the game, and it was just fantastic. And in New York, what were they doing in New York? It was 8 degrees, and they were all <laughs> huddled inside, you know, waiting for the pizza guy to come. I mean, come on! I know. But meanwhile, Kobe Bryant is the best player in the NBA. How long that's going to last, I don't know. I will dread the day that he can no longer play. He is my favorite player. He's a beauty to watch. 
He, he, it seems to me he can do this every night if he wanted to. I mean, not every night, not probably against Boston or Cleveland. I don't know. But it's, it's a pleasure to watch. I'm so excited to talk to he you. Can certainly, probably, by the way, he can certainly do it against the New York Knicks. Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that was easy for him. Look easy. He makes it look easy. He no, no. It look easy. It's the New York Knicks. You know what? I mean, come on. It's a lot easier against them than some of these other teams. I don't know. I, I wonder if I'm the only woman that's going to call in this hour, but I, I am not in your age demographic. I'm probably older than any of your callers, and but I listen to you every day. I turned on my son to you and a million other people. My son has called in. He's now uh, going to be 26. He loves you, too, and I'm just really excited to talk with you. There's so many topics I wish I could talk to you about. I agree with 90% of what you say, maybe 99%. I'll take it. Janet, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Eric is listening to us, uh, our online stream in Dallas on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Thanks for welcoming me back. Thank you so much, Eric. Yeah, um, like uh, some of the guys at the gym, we said the debate is over. Um, Kobe definitely is the, the best basketball player in the league. LeBron's not even close. But as um, far as Madison Square Garden, I mean, it probably it's probably the oldest arena in the league. And they might call it that because they have not just the Knicks, but they have a lot of, uh, you know, college games. So uh, it could be the Mecca just because it's been there the longest and most games been that played there. Ma- but that doesn't make it a Mecca of anything. By the way, I am looking at the AP Top 25. And here are the top 25 teams, according to the Associated Press. Connecticut, Oklahoma, North Carolina, Duke, Louisville. Pittsburgh, Wake Forest, Marquette, Xavier, Clemson, Butler, Purdue, Michigan State, Memphis, UCLA, Texas, Villanova, Gonzaga, Minnesota, Syracuse, Kansas, Washington, Illinois, Arizona State, and Utah State. Any of those teams play in New York? No, none of them do. Damn straight they don't. Right, right. I mean, I just like, I guess when I was coming up, I remember watching Big East tournaments with, you know, Iverson and Camby, and they usually play it up there. But other than that, how I mean, many was, How many championships has Iverson won? Uh, none. I was just talking about when they were in college. Ah, okay. Marcus yeah, Camby? I, I, I was talking about when they were in college, you know. I, I know. Marcus Camby? Yeah, Marcus Camby was at UMass. I mean, they were all in the Final Four. How, so. how, how, many, how many pro championships have these guys won? Zero and zero. Zero and zero. That's right. Oh, and now Marcus Camby, Marcus Camby gets to finish up his illustrious career with the Clippers. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I'm surprised he can still stay healthy. I mean, he's been injury prone since forever. Uh, you are right about that. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Jamal on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, man. How's hey. it going? Going okay. <laughs> Hey, you're fantastic, bro. I just wanted to give you a little bit of information about Spike Lee and his defense. He did two pretty good movies, man, in the last 15 years. One was uh, 25th Hour with um, Edward Norton, and the other was uh, Inside Man with um, Denzel Washington and uh, Jody Foster. You know what I'm saying? Great films, man. Pretty good. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> did anybody see these films other than you? <laughs> I, I'm sure a lot of people have seen them, man. They're, they're pretty good films, man. It's like, you get a chance, you know what I mean? Check them out and judge for yourself. Um, but, uh, and then as far as like the... Oscar, 61, by the way, uh, 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 Oscar nominations, any? I can't say that they were Oscar uh, nominations. See. <laughs> but they were great, though. But, and Golden then, uh, Globes? I'm sorry? Golden Globes? <laughs> no Golden Globes. Uh, SAG, no, SAG Awards? <laughs> And that I'm not sure of. Maybe. You know, Inside, Inside Man was great, man. It was a great film. <laughs> okay, okay. And, and, and then as far as, like, the uh, the, the, the 61 that uh, that Kobe scored, yeah, you can't play after 61, man. I mean, that's that's awesome. It, it, it can't. It can, I, you, never, you never know. You know what I mean? It's like, but he's, he's awesome. Kobe's great. He is. And, yes, sir. We, and we get to watch him every night. That's right. That's right. The best. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Jamal. Okay, sir, thank you. Appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Jerry on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What up, Tom? How's it going, man? It's going okay, Jerry. Hey, man. People just got to stop hating on Kobe. A lot of people don't even know that we had to trade bloody d to get Kobe Bryant from Charlotte, man. <laughs> they just got to let him do his thing, man. He's just the best player. And you know you're good when people are talking about you. You know, if Absolutely. they ain't talking about you, you're not doing anything good in the league. So do your thing, Kobe. Score your 61, your 80, however many points you want to score. And the Lakers are just going to keep on rolling, man. Forget the Boston Celtics. Yeah, there's a rivalry, 
But, you know, right now we're talking about Kobe, so Kobe's a man. Now let me ask you a question. What about LeBron James? LeBron James is good, but he doesn't have any championship rings. Once he gets a ring, we can consider him among the best. But right now, Kobe's, you know, to me, he's still young, even though he's in his early 30s. He has, you know, three rings. And so what if he had a little drama with Shaq? But he still has three rings, and people want what he has, so they got to talk about him. Hang on a second, Jerry. Alex, you don't agree with Jerry. Why not? No, I don't agree at all, man. Tell him. Uh, you know, I think that Kobe has a better jump shot. I'll give him that. But LeBron's got better defense, better inside game, better all-around game, stronger. He wasn't shooting air balls as soon as he got into the league like Kobe was. You know, just an all-around better player. It doesn't matter. Kobe got three rings. Off LeBron of Shaq. James, can he, LeBron James. He got three rings off of it. Shaq. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're talking about Kobe. Shaq is not even part of this equation, <laughs> man. We're talking about Kobe. He has three rings. LeBron James can't even shoot an 18-jump foot shot. He, and when he makes a three, he gets lucky, man. I don't, I, don't, I don't think LeBron, you're right. Le, LeBron James has not established himself well enough to be, to be considered among the best until he has a championship ring. LeBron James has already been to the finals without the one-two punch like Kobe had Shaq. He's already been to the finals. He's already proven matter. himself this year. He should get MVP this year. I mean, 61 against the Knicks, that's nothing. Try getting 55 when they were actually good, like Michael Jordan did. You know, 61 against these guys is nothing. It's like playing the WNBA team. It don't, it don't matter. <laughs> he, he, he's doing his thing. It doesn't really matter. I, I hear. Like I, I by the way, I hear. I hear Eddie Curry is being scouted by the WNBA. He's well, there you, there you go, Tom. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, Eddie Curry needs to pay up his dressing debt because he don't even he don't even have style anyways. You know the way I see it. In two years, Kobe will be retiring, and LeBron will be getting his second or third ring. That's the way I see it. Well, you know, you, okay, that can be a valid point. Until then, Kobe still Kobe's the best. Until I don't then, know. I don't know about that one, man. I don't know. All right, guys. Yeah, come on. Hey, Tom King, take me, <laughs> take me out Kobe, Kobe style. style. Take me out Kobe style too, man. I love that. All right, here you go. <laughs> Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show, coming to you from Hollywood. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Kobe Bryant, 61 points last night against the, the D-League's New York Knickerbockers. From the connoisseurs, the connoisseurs of basketball. It's Joe on the Tom Likas Show, hello. It's Mike of the Tom Likas Show. Mike. Hey, Tom, what's going on? Not much. You busy? Um, No, no. I thought you said Joe. I'm sorry. Uh, hey, a couple things. Uh, you were talking about Spike Lee movies and, you know, how, you know, what's a good one to come out. Have you ever seen He Got Game with uh, Denzel Washington and Ray Allen? Yeah, what uh, century was that made in? Well, that was I the don't know. 20th probably, century. Well, I think. Ray, Allen, Ray Allen was just coming out of high school, so. I'm not really sure, but I mean, it was probably the late 80s, I would guess. But I mean, you know, <laughs> well, that's yeah. great. I remember the late 80s. Hey, 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 no, something, hey, else hey. I wanted, something else I was telling Dean that's pretty uh, ironic is the fact that if you want to be the leading scorer at Madison Square Garden, you got to be a black man that's accused of raping a white woman. Because <laughs> in 1981, Bernard King played for the Utah Jazz, and he was accused of raping a white nurse in Salt Lake. He was acquitted. But he, yeah, yeah. So, I thought the leading scorer about his square garden was Isaiah Thomas. No, no, it's Bernard King. Then, the, then he was playoff. sued for uh, sexual harassment. Yes. Now, play, playoffs was Jordan, but actually in a regular season game, uh, Kobe broke Bernard King's record last night with 60 points. So. Uh, I, I don't think you were with me on that, but what are you going to do? 1 800 5 800 Tom, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Alex on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Great. Hey, so the Western Conference is basically the varsity squad, and the Eastern Conference is JV. The guy that called earlier and said LeBron James is better than Kobe, he made it to the finals, that's true. But in the Eastern Conference, when there's only three teams that are competitive, there's about five in the Western Conference. 
Yeah, there's nothing more exciting to see a game uh, between the Miami Heat and the Charlotte Bobcats. Yeah, I think there was a game on Sunday. It was uh, the Kings versus the Thunder. I was like, great, two teams with 15 wins. <laughs> Uh, but that is the West, keep in mind. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, thank you for the call. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred tom That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, uh, ooh, let's say hello to Giovanni on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. It's your gay son. Hi. I just had to call in and say that I love when you make fun of all these New Yorkers. I love it. I hate all these. Sorry, wow, wow, your... wow, zero tolerance policy. Oh, my God. Yeah. You can't say the F word, not even as an adverb. You can't do it. For God's sake. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Diego on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how's it going? It's going okay. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to comment on, on you saying uh, New York being the mecca of uh, basketball. I think many people uh, see that because of the street, uh, the street, the street ball, like N one and all that stuff. A lot New of York, great, you know, no, no, New York is. There's no doubt. I mean, uh, you have to give New York credit where credit is due. New York is the mecca of public <laughs> urination. I mean, that, nobody beats New York in that category. Yeah, that's why you know. I, like, I understand. I, started... that, I understand that Mayor Bloomberg is uh, lobbying to have public urination added to the Summer Olympics in 2012, and I I couldn't agree more because I know New Yorkers uh, uh, are very competitive in that aspect. There's one yeah, guy who can, the, There's the one guy. Talking. They have one guy in New York who is able to pee clear across the platform of the A train at 59th Street, uh, across the two express tracks, from one side, from the uptown side to the downtown side. It's unbelievable. Well, you know, it is what it is. It is indeed. 1 800 5 800 Tom is our telephone number. Juan on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how's it going, man? It's going great. Hey, I just wanted to comment on your uh, Kobe Bryant issue you guys had going on, man. I, you know, I just want to say, like, he is one of the best best players of all time. And, uh, you know, you're only as good as the people around you. Like, he needed Shaq to win those championships. And people have to admit that no matter, you know, how they what they think about Shaq. Well, uh, you know, every player needs uh, players around them. But uh, Kobe, even when he did not have a great team around him, uh, continued to be one of the top scorers in the league. Uh, statistically, was at the top of just about every relevant category. Yeah, but when it came, when it came to championships, he, he needed Shaq. Well, and like, by the way, like yeah, that's easy to say, but keep in mind, Shaq played in L.A. alone. If you remember, before Kobe came, yeah, 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 Shaq, right. did, Shaq never won a championship until Kobe came along. Not in exactly. Orlando and not in Los Angeles. Do you know that? Yeah, he needed Kobe. Right. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Just like one person is not just one great person himself. never wins a championship. That's absolutely right. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much, Mike. Hey, man, I just want to say this, bro. Check this out. Um, as far as any of us are concerned, what man on this earth do you know has this much iconic status that could be convicted for rape? And then uh, he was never convicted of rape. In well, fact, not... he's never been convicted of anything. Well, you know, well, just accused of it. But then There's a big difference between being accused of something and convicted of something. Because, tell you what, if Kobe was convicted of rape, he would not have scored 61 points against the New York Knickerbockers last night. Yeah. He would have scored 61 points at Leavenworth. That's what he would have done. Yeah, my bad, too. My bad. But anyways, people love Kobe. Everybody, you got to just love this dude. I mean, you can't hate him. I mean, ever since he was... In high school, I mean, when he was over there in Philly, he was doing his thing. And then, like, out here for the Lakers, even being accused of rape, you know, he's doing, people are still buying. He's the number one selling jersey in the league. So love him or hate him, you got to show him his respect, man. Hey, man, I just wanted to say thanks to everything, man. You're a great dude. And uh, can you take me out with a ball rip and a Snoop Dogg? I certainly can. Yes. one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, here's Robert on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. I was wondering if uh, Kobe has yet earned enough of your respect to uh, take off of your playlist. You know, to take me out Kobe style. I'll tell you I, what. I, I'll tell you what. The minute Kobe asks me to take it off, I will. All right, because I because I know I know Kobe, and it, you know, and, and it's just not funny. Well, all Kobe has to do is call in and ask me to take it off. I'll take it off the day he calls. 
Yeah. I'll tell you what. Next time I see him, I'm going to see him in about 10 days. I'm going to have him call your show and have him take it off. That's all he has to do. And so you, you, there's no other way for you to do it. Why, why, would it need, why would I need another way? What would be wrong? I mean, as far as I know, it doesn't offend him. If he would like it taken off, all he has to do is ask. Yeah, well, it's just, it's, first of all, it's... it's, it's Actually, I mean, if put, Colby you're, you're has time to call Big Boy and Adam Carolla and everybody else in town, Colby can spare five minutes to call me. <laughs> yeah, with the springs in the background and the take me out, Colby. So it's just, uh, All Colby has to do is call and ask, and I will take it off the moment he calls. By the way, keep in mind that when Colby uh, was accused of rape and everybody was jumping on his case, one person stood out in his defense, and that was me. And I said he'd never be convicted. We even gave out T-shirts that said "Free Kobe." We backed him all the way. The, the, then why do you have the "Take Me Out Kobe" style if you support it? Because him? it's funny. I did not know. Okay, right. but uh, but not, I not will be me. but I will be more than happy to take it off with a simple phone call. That's all it would take. Well, I will mention it, okay. uh, Tom. I will mention it to him. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. If he mentions it on Big Boy that he'd like me to take it off. I'll do it there too. Okay, fair enough, Tom. All right. Thanks Th a lot. Thank you, Robert. It's one of Kobe's close friends. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. <laughs> Let's say hello here to Rich on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? It's going great. Uh, yeah, uh, what does it take for somebody to lose their... Uh... Uh, their sense of humor because taking you out Kobe style that's just hilarious I'm pretty sure Kobe even loves it well I, that's probably why Kobe has never called and asked me to take it off even uh, John Black the uh, PR guy for the Lakers who I, I love dearly and uh, you see John all the time for the game. he's never conveyed a message from Kobe saying Kobe would like to take it off so uh, yeah. until I get an indication that, that Kobe would like to take it off the air it, it, it stays yeah, he lives in L.A. He listens to Adam Crow anymore. I'm pretty sure he's heard this show. I'm pretty sure he's heard it. He's not having a problem with it. And as far as uh, LeBron goes, a couple of callers back, they say that LeBron's not uh, LeBron's better than Kobe. That's only if Kobe is out of the picture. Kobe has to be as the NBA and retired. And then maybe LeBron can take over as the best in the NBA, but that's only if some rookie doesn't come in and pass him up. All right, Rich. Thank you for that. People have very strong opinions about basketball. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Don't forget the Tom Likas Show now six days a week, Saturdays 2 to 6 p.m. on 97.1 FM Talk here. It's the Tom Likas Show.